Hmm, maybe I shouldn't do that. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be unboxing this Jackson Art package which has actually been sitting on my desk for a couple of weeks. I'm quite embarrassed to say that because I really do want to get into this um, but I just needed some time to be able to film it, open it up with you and yeah just share what I've got recently. I also wanted to say that what I bought in here was actually purchased with my affiliate credit so this is the first time I've actually been able to buy something with the affiliate credit that's on my Jackson account because of people purchasing materials through the links that I share in my description so if that's one of you thank you so much and uh, let's have a look at what I have purchased. So let's have a look what we have here. So it's one pencil, a polychromous Faber-Castell earth green, Crixis, I think, and Natasha Newton were talking, I think, about this colour. And uh, I'd seen it in Crixis's sketching kit and I thought, yeah, I want to try that colour out. So I'm very keen to give it a shot. It's a lovely natural green. Okay, so that's that. And then what else have I got? Oh yes, I bought some watercolour paper. This is square size. I haven't used this type, this brand before. Fluid watercolour paper, hot press finish, 15 sheets bound on two edges. I actually just wanted to have some square watercolour paper. So I thought that would be great to try some smaller pieces. I have a lot of paper that's A4 or A3 and then I normally cut it into landscape format. So I thought it would be great to try uh, on a square format instead. But the real exciting materials that I want to show you today are in these little boxes. I wonder if you can guess what they are. Ooh, two more boxes inside. I love this, it's like past the parcel. Nicely packaged. And inside, if you can see, dee dee dee, I have bought some Neo Pastels. These are oil pastels from Karen Dash. And I've just selected a few colours that I wanted to try out. Just one in that one. I'll tell you the colours when I open them all up. There we go. So I've just bought three, six, nine, ten pastels, and can you tell that I was thinking of spring when I was choosing colours? So I've got some yellows. I was thinking of the gorse that um, is very common here in Cornwall. So I've got a golden yellow and a yellow and then I've got a pale yellow and then I have a very light pink this is called granite rose I thought that would be perfect for just areas where I need maybe a bit of warmth but I don't really want to draw too much attention and this one is a cream I thought cream would be great 
And then I've got a really bright green. This is a yellow green. I've noticed actually, I know people say, oh, but that's not natural. That's not in the, you rarely see that green. But actually this time of year, I've seen this kind of those really bright greens that you get springtime. And you do see it actually a lot of places. So, and then I've also got some more um, neutral kind of greens, darker greens. I've got an olive, an olive black and a khaki green, kind of like an olivey green. And then I've also got a white. I was um, also thinking of having a pastel, an oil pastel that could go over some of my mixed media and thinking that might be work well, you know, for blossom or to even act as a resist that I can go over. And then I've got an ash grey, because again, I thought that would be a nice uh, grey to have. So there we go. Just small selection, but I'm quite excited to try these out. And what I'm going to do is I'll get my play sketchbook out, the one that I like to use to just experiment a bit in. I'm going to swatch them and then I'm going to just play with them. I haven't used oil pastels in a very long time. I think the last time I used oil pastels was um, maybe when I was in a school environment. Oil pastels have never really appealed to me. However, over the last few years when I've been using uh, my water-soluble crayons, I've been finding that there is some similarities in the texture that they give and the crayon texture that those water-soluble crayons give. I've thought maybe actually I might like them now or maybe be interested to see how I can incorporate them into my sketchbook and my work that I do outside, particularly if I'm looking at lots of blossom and I want to have some resist or just be able to build up a few more layers. Because I can build up layers with the with the mediums that I'm using at the moment, but I felt maybe I'm missing something by not maybe trying these out. So I'm gonna try them out and I'm going to mix them probably with a few different mediums so I can see how they work together. I don't really have a clear plan, this will be a play time for me in my sketchbook. You may learn something. You may already know everything about oil pastels already. And in that case, just maybe get your sketchbook out and have an experiment time with me. Um, but let's see what, uh, let's see how these work and see what they can do. So here are the Caran d'Ache Neo Pastels. I've put them in kind of in a colour order and what I'm going to do is I'm going to swatch them on my sketchbook pages and then I'm going to just basically have a play with them and see how they work. I have brought all of my other mediums that I like to use so it kind of be like a as if I were if I was outside and type of subjects I'd be sketching would be landscape, maybe flowers, uh, hedgerows, that kind of thing. I'm going to use my sketchbooks as well for inspiration. But first of all I'm going to just swatch them and see how they are on my page. So we'll first start with white, which will be very hard to see on the page, but just gives me an idea of how they work They're quite creamy and smooth. So that one's white. Now we've got ash grey. Let's see if that, oh yeah, that does show up quite well. Almost looks like clay. Then I'm going to use the granite rose.
very dusky pink. Then we've got cream. Almost like the colour of this page, so that almost blends in. Then we've got a light yellow, pale yellow. That's actually a very nice pastel yellow. Now we move on to yellow. This is just yellow. I chose this colour because of the gorse blossoms in the area. And also there's lots of light yellow, that yellow um, flowers, there's loads of flowers that have just come out. Now we have slightly more orangey yellow, this one is a golden yellow. And this is, this will be great for um, the colours, the light churn on the rocks. And there's a lot of this kind of golden colour in the environment, rust. Then we have a yellow green. This one, as I said, it's like a very spring green. Let's see. Yep. You can get quite narrow marks with it if you have it on its side. Then we've got a khaki green. See this green a lot as well. Nice. And finally, we have, this is an olive black. Oh yeah. Nice. See, that would be great on rocks and darker places that you don't want like a really cool black. You want kind of, you know, it's in the green range. So that's really nice. So though, there are the colors, my color palette that I'm going to be adding to my materials. I'll give you a closer look now. So today on my desk, I've got my Neocolor 2s in their tins, greens, blues, and mostly pinks, browns. And there are the Caran d'Ache Neo Pastels. And then along there we have some watercolors. These are Daniel Smith watercolors. Then we've got some Dewent um, and gouache. They have gouache and ink tents, pencil, paint pans. And then just here, I've just grabbed a handful of um, brush pens and ink tents pencils that I usually go for. So I'm just going to, sketchbook I'm using is, is Pith. I've used it before on the channel to do experimental things. You will have, recognized my mixed media piece here and yeah I use this for my experiments I'd much prefer to use this in the studio and not take it outside and up there I just have my pencil roll so I can grab any of those if I feel I need to Okay, so these are my current sketchbooks that I'm using at the moment. This little sticker from Crixis, I am an artist. It's uh, very reassuring when you see that on your sketchbook. Um, but yeah, so this sketchbook has it's been on the go for, well, all of this year and a bit of last year. Um, I use it alongside this other one and uh, I've shown 
what I've been working on um, on the channel. The last sketchbook tour I did was of the winter prompts that I've been using and I'm still now sketching and I'm using my spring prompts. So this is why I uh, was noticing um, in my landscape and the environments around me loads of uh, blossom and spring flowers coming up and whilst I find different ways to capture those, for instance in this this piece um, I pre-painted the pages with um, inks and then also put it put some salt on here and I, I just love that effect um, but yeah there's as you can see I've still got pages that are ready to kind of draw on um, this was a piece that I did actually last weekend and it was again painted uh, done over pre-painted pages and I, I really like the way that the neo color works in this way you're able to layer up and get some texture there but sometimes um, I find that, say if I want brighter whites or yellows, um, sometimes they're not bright enough for me and they get a little bit lost. So, and especially this time of year when you have really white blossoms, so there's like blackthorn blossom and then there's lots of white flowers like a lot of umbellifers, cow's parsley, um, three-cornered leek, wild garlic. A lot of them have these really white blossom flower heads and I just wanted to yeah find a way in which to capture them um, a little better. So actually you can see here this was blackthorn and gorse and blossom. I used, again, just my regular stuff that I usually use. I actually, on top, put white gouache. And you can see in some cases it works and then, but other cases I didn't feel like it was bright enough. And it's those kind of details that I thought would be nice to see if I can get a better result with if I tried um, the oil pastels. So this is just an experiment. We'll see how it goes. And I'll use some of these pages to inspire me um, and maybe draw reference from. So I thought I wanna just, um, yeah, start working out, trying them out and working out what I will do first. So I think I might start with this as an inspiration and see how I get on with that. I'm going to just draw a quick box. Just to give me something to work in. And how I'd usually start when I'm out on location and just go in with some kind of wash or background. Um, as you know, I've been working, I've said I've been working on top of inky, inky washes. So this will be slightly different. Maybe what I'll do is I'll use my Neo colours. Just going to layer up some neo colours to give me something to work on top of. So this is kind of where I'd have the gorse. Now let's um, see <laughs> how 
So over is slightly damp. I want to see how it works. So this is the um, the olive black. So it's a great colour actually, really good colour for darker areas of landscape. So it goes on no problem. I have got a similar colour to this, which is raw umber. Sepia. Now, just to show comparison, so if I was at this stage and I want to start adding some darker, so darker coverage, I can add that oil pastel over it and it's going on really well. But if I try to add, this is a neo colour, maybe a similar colour, a bit lighter, it's it's a slightly blending, it's, it's not as dark, but that's because it, the paper's still wet. So this is quite good because it's given me, I can quickly work with it. I don't have to wait for the paper to get really dry. Okay, you see how the same with this colour. It does go over the dark, slightly transparent there, though. Quite as opaque. So coverage wise, it's great. It's going over. Now, if I try and bring in my ink tense pencil, there's a little bit of resist. It's making things a little blurry. That might also be because the ink tense pencil is, is also reacting to the dampness of the paper. Yeah, so is it harder for the ink tense pencil to go over? But that's okay because then you can get, get maybe into the cracks in between. At the moment it all looks quite relaxed, doesn't it? Okay, let's see if I start adding some white. If I can. So actually this is cream. So it definitely is going over okay. Kind of semi opaque. Trying the white on top. Quite like that. be hard to get that same effect with so this is the white new color too just don't get hardly any pigment whereas with this Yeah, I like that. It's a grey light. Yeah, 
and that's in a really interesting effect. Now all of that darker coverage is, has been pushed back. That darker colour has been pushed back a bit. It's kind of blended into the background. The state of my point of it, it goes, it looks like it would use it quite quickly. It's quite soft and obviously you will pick up the marks of the other colours. Let me see if we can start with brush pen. So this is a new colour too, if I was trying to go over that green. Okay, Let's see what this does. Definitely more opaque. Okay, now if I was going to add water which I know will move some of the green. So that's new colour there, so that blends that, but I wonder if it, yeah obviously it's not going to move at all. A bit of resist. I mean, it really glides on really well. A bit like pastels when they're wet. I can get kind of thinner lines. Still chunky, but... This is a pit oil pencil. So yeah, it's, um, it doesn't really go over. It goes over a little bit, but Part of me is going, mm, I want to blend some of that away, um, which is what I could do with my new colour too. But no, when I put water on, it's not going to move. Something to uh, get used to. can use my finger. Okay, that's interesting. I would think I'd have to work out a bit more. I mean, it layers over again, it layered over the watercolour. I think probably I used too much of it in that case. Let's try a field. I'm going to put a sky in as well. And I think it'd be nice to put tree in. Tree here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try that in the... with the oil pastel. Just 
see how the new colours are on top. They kind of smudge. They smudge the... Uh, interesting, they smudge the oil pastel. That's quite an interesting effect, actually. Because I was thinking, actually, about, you know, using my fingers to smudge. But actually, that's really interesting. To smudge it with the new colour, too. It's a bit like when I... I'm using like um, a brush pen over the Neo Color 2, the way that that will blend. I can come back in probably just to sharpen some of these, I think. Yeah. So I wonder. some lighter leaves. Nice. So what I've done here as well is now added some white to my sky over the blue and again it just blends it. It's quite interesting effect. Smooths it. So I like how the white is mixing with that neo colour too. Another thing that I just added here is again Neo Colour 2 on top of that to give me a tree shadow. See if I can add some green. So I'm going to now add some flowers. See if I can. If it's dark enough to pick up. Try the cream. Yeah, that's better. Thinking of um, dandelions. And buttercups. This is the cream. What was that? No, that was the pale yellow. So that was good, pale yellow. Touch of pink. Then let's see if I can go in with a ink tense pencil. Yes. So it kind of the pastel resists the line, but then it kind of sticks to the obviously the underneath. So that works really well. Mm. Let's see if we can get Some hedges. I love how it moves a little bit and then it doesn't look so perfect. I probably would do that up here as well. Just move. That's interesting effect there. It does make though the pieces seem a bit heavier to me, but that's probably because I've worked on them more or overworked them a little bit and also a little bit smoother as well in places. A bit more painterly, I think, than my sketches, usual sketches. I want to try adding some oil pastel at this point and then going in with some watercolours or water soluble medium. So often you get lots of 
spring flowers at this time so and you know they are light yellows whites some green so I'm gonna see if I can recreate and also you can I think blend over the top so try and keep it light though I think I might you know with these maybe overwork them so I'm gonna have to work that out probably best to do it when I'm out drawing I always find when I'm working in the studio you don't feel the pressure of time and so it does affect your work you know you slow down which isn't always a bad thing but because of that you end up overthinking sometimes and then overworking and that's one of the things I love about working outside it just makes you kind of maybe do things that you wouldn't normally do because of that pressure so that's why timed exercises are good I'm pressing lightly now because I want to get some of that texture in not be so heavy Liking the white actually coming through there. <laughs> My plan is though to do put a darker, darker wash over. Hmm. Getting more ideas now. First of all, let's just put in some. That was a ink tense bar. Yeah, look at that. It's getting resist there now. So. That is um, Neo Colour over water. Ooh, paper really doesn't like too much water. Yes, yeah, unusual just having this resist there when I'm so used to everything being water soluble. I think I'm gonna mix up some <clears throat> darker areas or darker wash just to give some shadow. Let's see how this works. Ooh, feels so weird. That resist. Being a bit more dabby actually with it, I think helps because you still get little bits of white which uh, I think help Let me just do some splats. Great for a bit more abstracted foliage. Go over now with what's this a the cream I think. Yeah, nice. So Definitely nice. Definitely works going over the top. The image I'm actually using is I took a picture of the picture uh, of my, of on my camera. I took a picture from my phone, and in a way, we, because it's such a a poor quality picture. Means I'm not obsessed with details. That's definitely an interesting result there. I think I like that one more than that one because it's got the white of the paper coming through as well. Okay, final space. Let's go for a little path down to the sea. Let's go with the 
granite rose. It's a beautiful path down to the uh, sea that I went saw on my Explore and Draw podcast that I recorded over the weekend. Be the last weekend now. But all of the flowers are all in bloom and just a riot of colour. So I want to try and be a bit more minimal maybe here. <laughs> well, I'm minimal with my colours, but minimal with my materials. Let's see if I can do it. I think that green probably is a bit bright there, but I can mute it a bit. Gives a nice soft edge, doesn't it, when you layer over the top. And light yellow. It's the dark. I want to see if I can see how to push that back. Look at that. There we go, I'm warming it up now. It's feeling a bit cool with that green. Okay. I do want to do something here. Sure, what colour? Like, ah, maybe the granite rose. It's hard to get details, but you're kind of doing an impression, aren't you? I think this needs to be. Feel like I'm uh, getting into a flow state with these now. Hence my quietness. All right, let's work out the background. That's going to be messy. Cream. See what happens when you get bits on the tip of it. Kind of come off, don't they? I'm sure I there's a way to keep them clean. But actually I quite like them. <laughs> 
we've added now to the sky. Oh, we've got some blue on there as well. There we go. Hmm. Well, that was, um, that was quite fun, actually. And actually just using one medium wasn't, yeah, I actually really like it. Interesting, isn't it? I feel like the blending actually has really helped with that one rather than just use the colour neat. So like this green here now looks too, too in your face. So that's really interesting. Things to think about. So blending, mixing on the page is actually quite nice. Yeah, yeah, softens, softens it. can see how though you can get these quite dirty. So I'll have to um, look at ways to clean them. But there we go. I have had a little bit of a play with my Neo Pastels, which are artist oil pastels from Parin Dash. I'd love to hear your thoughts. How do you use them? And it would be really interesting to take these out with me on a walk and see if I can incorporate them somehow into my sketchbook. There's another thing that is, I'm thinking about in my head and that is when I close these pages, will they smoosh together? And I think probably they will smoosh together. So I'm gonna have to find something just to stop them from doing that. My new colour pastels too sometimes do but they you know they definitely are not as thick as this and actually my new colour pastels I tend to dilute quite a bit of water and then layer up so it's not really as thick as working with oil pastels. So I think Sennelia may do a fixative, so I will look into that and until I get that I probably will just put a piece of paper in between my pages just to make sure that they don't stick together so much. My hands though are a lot more dirty than they are when I just use my water soluble materials. So that's another thing to consider and I'll try, maybe wet wipes will be good to get my hands clean. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching this experimental play session with me. I look forward to sharing more of you as I incorporate them into my work. <laughs> <laughs>